Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know this is going to sound very Instagrammy, but I have been obsessing over the LilyGo TTGo TSIM 7000G ESP32 board. And I know the entire world is talking about the Raspberry Pi Pico, and I didn't have my hands on one of those till one of you kind people sent me one yesterday, but this board has been awesome. Um, let me go over it real quick and show you a little bit about what this thing is and why I think it's so great. First of all, it is your typical ESP32 board, so it has all of the goodness. It has the Bluetooth, it has the Wi-Fi, it has the faster processor, although this one may be underclocked to save power. Um, it is, at its heart, an ESP32 with a bunch of pins broken out that you can use. But obviously, there's a lot more. So this thing, starting off on this side, has USB-C, which I know a lot of you love, but it's a very chunky, heavy-duty USB-C connector. Pretty impressed by that. It also has an SD card slot. So right off the bat, you can see that we're able to do some data logging and things like that. Uh, it's got a reset button and a power button over here, uh, which is pretty interesting. I never really used the power button. Then it has this whole chip over here, and this is the 7000G. Now, don't confuse that with any of the 700 series. This is the 7000 series. And as somebody who runs a an Arduino Facebook group, I see posts of people just beating their heads against the wall with the SIM 700 and SIM 800 GPS modules and GSM modules that are out there on the market. Some of them are 2G and things like that. Just SIM card incompatibilities, bad software examples. People love the idea of them, but I've seen so many people struggle with how to use these GSM um, and GPS boards. But this is different. This is the 7000G, and I'm going to get back to why that's important in a moment. It does have this SIM card, this nano SIM card slot, and so now you can see that we're starting to do some very cool things. And then coming around this side, we have a power switch. And the reason why we have a power switch is because right here, we have a place to put a charging cable. Now, what makes the charging cable special is that this thing is designed to be charged with solar. That's right. So this has solar battery management charging on it. And you would say, well, where do you plug the battery in? Kapow! You plug the battery in back here. Now, this is not my first ESP32 with a battery on it, but when you start packing all this stuff together, this is pretty powerful. Just a note, it does use the non-protected cells. Uh, you really can't squeeze, I mean, you might be able to, but squeezing one of these protected cells in there would be fairly difficult. But you don't need the protection because this thing does it for you. Um, so you're able to use cells that you salvaged out of a Ryobi battery or a laptop or something like that. So what makes this thing really special besides all the parts that are on the board? It has full-on LTE, which means that you can send text messages, you can place phone calls, and you can send data to the cloud. Now what makes that really interesting is this right here, Google Fi. So I am a Google Fi subscriber, and one of the least known features about being a Google Fi subscriber is that you can have up to five data-only SIM cards, which means that if you're already a subscriber, you can get up to five of these, and you can have free LTE data on your IoT devices. How awesome is that? I used one of these things in Africa and I streamed something like 18 gigs of data over a couple of day period in Africa off Google Fi, did not get charged a penny. And so this makes this crazy powerful because all of a sudden you can put a giant battery on this thing, you can put it in a field, you can hook a solar charger up to it and you can be constantly connected. Now, it does come with uh, both the GPS antenna and the uh, LTE antenna. I can tell you the LTE antenna is pretty stout because Meredith the office cat got a hold of it and chewed it, and it still worked perfectly after that. I think she happened to miss the right traces, uh, but she apologizes. She says that she's sorry, and uh, anyway, this thing works awesome. So when I got this thing, I sort of braced myself for coding hell. Again, I run a group of 140,000 makers, 
and I see so many problems with the SIM 700 and the SIM 800, but this thing was about as easy as you could get. So they give you an example sketch that tests all the features. So you can pop the sketch on, it's going to test the GPS, it's going to test the LTE, it's going to go through and test the SD card, and so you automatically have example sketches on how to use all of the various features. Now, they also do provide some sketches to get you in some various existing IoT platforms. I think Blink is one of them. There's also Cayenne uh, and stuff like that. And so just super easy. I was connected to LTE within one minute of plugging this board into my computer, which is pretty impressive. Now, the one thing to note, it is a little tricky because you can't develop GPS indoors. You're not gonna get GPS signal indoor with this thing. And so uh, I eventually wound up putting it out on the workbench outside my office, which is where a cat got a hold of it. So uh, that is a hazard of developing this type of thing. But uh, once you once you have it up and running, there's just, you can make simple calls and find out how much voltage is coming in on your solar panel, how much power is left in your battery in all these different states, as well as sending GPS information. So in my initial test with this thing, I wrote an API that would accept latitude and longitude from this thing. And I was able to take it around. I'm obviously not going to share my live data, but I was able to take this thing around and every 30 seconds it was sending uh, the latitude and longitude up to the server and did not have a single issue. I'll be happy to give you the sketch to do that. Um, but this thing is just awesome. So the possibilities with this board are pretty much endless. If you need LTE or GPS, uh, I think this is the way to go. I've used some of the other GPS boards and I got them all running, uh, but this thing was just easier. Uh, like I said, this thing came to me from Banggood. It runs about 40 bucks on Banggood. I have an affiliate link in the description. Super helpful to me if you use that link. I did try ordering this from a few of the other usual people, and it just got returned every single time. I was never actually able to get my hands on one, but Banggood delivered. And so um, this thing is a very, very exciting board. Very easy to get up and running with my GPS and my LTE. Now, I did talk about Google Fi, and if you're a Google Fi customer, it's a no-brainer because this is absolutely free. But you're not obligated to use Google Fi. You can use any of the uh, LTE character. You can use any of the LTE carriers that support the bands that this thing supports. So thank you to Banggood for sending this to me. I'll have some code in the description that you guys can play around with. Uh, I didn't try to optimize it for this particular project because I'm doing something different with it, but I will give you the basics to send your latitude and longitude up to an API. And uh, yeah, this thing, if you need it, if you need these features, this thing is a buy, 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 buy. And I don't say that very often on this channel. Most of the time I'm like, eh, if you want it, this is a buy. It's an awesome, awesome board. Uh, so, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.